So good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm Alicia Stubbs, and a senior manager of family engagement and advocacy at Easter Seals, Ontario. Um, and I'm so excited to be here for our first evening of our second series of the TD workshops. Um, so we are very grateful for TD Canada to be, be providing us with the opportunity to um, engage in these financial literacy workshops to help support um, folks through Easter Seals um, Ontario. Um, I am incredibly excited to introduce tonight's speaker, um, Paula. With her 20 plus years of corporate experience, she took her love of helping people to her current role as financial security advisor. She's passionate about her clients and helping to understand their values and goals. This understanding allows her to create financial plans that will ensure her clients' financial goals are met. She maintains long-lasting relationships through strong bonds built on trust and respect. Paula specializes in helping clients move from the corporate world to being self-employed as well as on prospecting for new clients, staying motivated and motivated and moving towards your goals and finding success in your field. Her honesty and openness has led to lasting friendships with her existing clients. She thrives working with individuals and small business owners, helping with the planning and implementation on wealth management strategies, retirement planning, and estate conversation. So with that, Paula, I will pass it along to you. Excellent. My thank you, Alicia. Um, that's a whole lot of description for at the end of the day, I love to help people when it comes to money and when it comes to budgeting. So um, for those that are listening and those are watching, it, it does sound a little overwhelming, but at the end of the day, my role is a financial advisor, financial security advisor. There's a couple of different titles um, for that. And it really comes down to helping people understand their money, how to budget, how to save, how to, well, we all know how to spend it, but all of those fun, fun pieces. So um, I have a short little presentation that I'm going to pop up on the screen. By all means, Alicia, please let me know if it's coming out properly. Yeah, I can see it perfectly. Excellent. So I'm obviously doing a little bit to do with financial literacy. And I know Alicia um, had said if uh, anybody, and we might touch this later, if you have some questions while you're watching, by all means, reach out. I'll do my best to answer them in the moment. As we get through the presentation, if you have information or if you have questions, sorry, that you would like some answers to, um, Alicia is going to have my email address available, my phone number. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Money gets a little bit confusing to understand some of the terminology. I'm here to help. I'm here to answer some questions. And again, after this presentation, whenever you've watched this video, I am simply a phone call away and I am happy to answer your questions. So what I wanna dive into a little bit, um, and it basically says, um, does what you know now affect the future? And when we talk about our money and, and what does that look like? And it basically I say, of course, what you know today affects tomorrow. The more information you have today, the more that's going to affect your tomorrow. You couldn't drive a car without a license. And that's why you need to learn today to basically drive a car. It's the same with your money. The more that you can learn today, what you can start learning today in terms of about how to spend your money, how to save it, how to budget wisely today is going to affect your tomorrow. So one of the things in this next slide, it says, um, how does your attitude towards money change as you age? So when we're younger, so the example in here, it sort of talks about a five-year-old. Oh, come on, mom, can I have a dollar to go buy that ring? And then when you're maybe 14, you're like, mom, I want $60 to go buy that designer label top and those really cool pants, you know, the ones everyone else are wearing. At 18, it's sort of like, oh, shoot, mom, how can I get some money for college? Hmm, I'm going to ask my mom. And then maybe when you're around 40, which is a little bit younger than me, you're like, ooh, I need to start saving retirement and I've got to stop spending. So what does all of that mean? It means at different ages, we have a different understanding about money. When we're young, we want to go buy an ice cream. Maybe at five years old, you're looking for a doll, you're looking for a toy truck. As you get a little bit older, maybe you're starting to look to buy some clothes that are similar to your friends, other people. Then when you get to the age maybe that you're possibly looking at going to college or post-secondary education or you want to take a course, 
you're going to have to look at money a little bit differently then. And then when you're older as an adult, maybe you're looking to rent a place, you're looking to buy a place, maybe it's a car. So there's different times in your life that you're going to need money for different things and you're going to have a different attitude about it. So me as an adult, I'm, I have a home, I have my dog that might come in and out of this video that I need to make sure he's taken care of. When I was younger and I was the one, mom, can I have the dollar to buy a ring? That was usually the candy ring pop at the store. I have a bit of a sweet tooth. So it, the next one I have, it says, what are the differences between savers and spenders? And it kind of sounds obvious. People that like to spend are exactly that, spenders. They receive short-term satisfaction by getting the object that they want immediately. What does that mean? I'm gonna take my money today to go buy this. Whereas a saver is like, I'm gonna save my money so down the line I can buy this. So when we talk about short-term satisfaction, I'm gonna go spend some money so I have something in my hands today. Like I want a book maybe, or I want a phone or a magazine or that new shirt. So basically spenders receive short-term right away. You get something in your hot little hands. Savers, they're the ones that they're going to appreciate items down the line because they've saved their money. So spenders have little money in the bank because they often spend their money on pricey items or lots of items or spend it as soon as they get it. They're often in debt and debt is when you owe money or maybe your bank account doesn't have anything in it or you borrowed money off your mom or your dad or your friend. Hey, can I borrow $20? that's considered a debt, you owe that money. Um, I'm just gonna finish reading these. So savers, they have money in the bank because they know how to manage their money and they're prepared for financial emergencies. So let's go back to spenders. If you have a job and you get a paycheck, savers are the ones that are gonna put a big portion away, probably in a bank account. Spenders are the ones that are gonna take that check and race and cash it and go shopping. And maybe it's clothes, maybe it's a video game, Maybe it's a new purse, maybe it's a book. Obviously I'm a book person, that's why I'm holding one. And so the spenders are the ones that don't have much. So then they tend to find themselves what would be considered in debt or they owe money. The savers are the ones that generally have what's called a credit. So you have debt when you owe and then you have credit on the other side and your credit is when it's positive. So if you ever hear those terminologies, debt, you owe money, credit, you have money. So that's probably a good time right about now to stop and think, hmm, what are you? Are you a spender or a saver? And the previous one we sort of talked about is thinking about longer term as an adult being a saver, what would we need to save money for? And exactly that, are we looking for somewhere to live? Are we looking for a vehicle? Are we looking to maybe take a course, go to school? Lots of different things. Can't do those if you don't have some credit, if you don't have money in the bank. One of the slides that I didn't add in here, if you've heard the term of a credit card, if anyone's ever, maybe some of you have one, a Visa, a MasterCard, that's when you have a credit card that you can go and purchase something what's considered on credit, but it still becomes a debt. You still have to owe that money. It's really, really important in terms of budgeting. If you use a credit card to go buy something, and let's just say it's a $100 item on a credit card, you then in turn have to pay that credit card. And if you're a spender, you may spend all your money and you still have that debt that you owe. Don't want to get too, too intense in that because there's a lot of information when it comes to credit cards. And that can be a whole other presentation. So we're going to chat a little bit about some definitions. This would be the moment if you pulled out your dictionary. So literacy, this the whole point of this is financial literacy is understanding your money. So literacy is having an expansive knowledge in a certain subject. And when we talk about finance, it's the management of your money. What are you doing? Now, there are lots of different programs out there that if you have a job and you get a paycheck that you should be putting 80% of your paycheck away and only spending 20%. Some say it's 30 that you can spend and 70 you need to put away. Why do you need to save? One of the slides previous talked about a financial emergency. Well, what does that look like? Uh, if you have a car and you got a flat tire, you're going to need to get it fixed. If you're taking a course in classes and you need to buy textbooks and you didn't budget your money and your course starts tomorrow, you need to get those textbooks. Um, there's all types of different things that people would consider a financial emergency. Somebody that has a house and the roof starts to leak, you got to get it fixed pretty quickly. That might be a financial emergency. 
So when we talk about managing our money, it's really understanding what that looks like. If you're watching this and maybe you get an allowance from your parents where you get some money, same thing, to buy lunches or whatever that might look like. Are you spending all of it or are you saving it and using it the way that you need to? Again, there's a couple of different programs that you can do a little budget sheet. And if you do have a job or you have money that's coming in, how do you save that? How do you set it aside? And there are budget sheets. Again, if you're watching this and you're interested, I'd be happy to send them to you. Here comes your paycheck. And what does that look like? Well, maybe you have, you know, maybe it's lunch money, maybe it's groceries, maybe it's a vehicle, maybe it's um, a bus pass, maybe it's clothes or a membership. How do you take the money that you get from your paycheck and make it last till you have your next pay or your next amount of money? And those are called budgeting sheets or budgeting templates. So we talk about why does understanding managing our money, why is financial literacy, again, financial literacy is understanding the management of money. Why is it so important? Well, life is about money. People have jobs, people have careers. Some people are what are called entrepreneurs. They own their own business. We work to get a paycheck, to get money into the bank, to turn around and be able to, again, buy groceries and, and use money for all those things. Go to a movie, go to a restaurant, go get ice cream. So people are sometimes, people are defined by how much money they make and what they do or what they possess for a living. Sometimes people look at that. You can see people with a big house or a fancy car or a big farm, expensive clothing. They tend to spend their money on those things. And some people feel that they're defined by what they have. Some people, their success is determined by how happy they are. This is all about money, so we'll carry on that topic. So sometimes, therefore, we to be successful, sometimes people feel it's looked upon um, in terms of how you want to manage your money. So. Life is about money. People are defined sometimes by how much they make, um, possessions, what they do for a living, different types of careers, different type of jobs. And therefore we wanna be successful and we wanna look to pawn well. And in the future, we're gonna need, we wanna try to help you understand to how to manage your money so that over your lifetime, you take care of yourself and you continue to have money in your bank account. And we want you to have a credit. I wish I could quiz you guys on this one. So I chatted a little bit about an entrepreneur, and I know there's a lot of you that are going to watch this that are maybe considering being an entrepreneur, maybe you are. What does that mean? You're a self-starter, you want to start your own business, you want to have something, can be anything from lawn cutting to a store to a salon that you run as an entrepreneur and as a business owner. So we want to chat, if you're out there thinking about running a little business, what does that look like in terms of you and what you need to do? Well, first off, like I was saying, an entrepreneur is a person who owns, they manage, and they take the risk of owning a business. So if you want to open your own little ice cream shop, you would be considered an entrepreneur and you would need to understand everything that's involved in doing that. So how does this all relate? You're probably thinking if you want to open the ice cream shop. If you haven't figured out by now, I have a bit of a sweet tooth for ice cream. Well, an entrepreneur has to be financially literate. You have to have an understanding of how to manage your money. So in order to succeed at your business, you can't go open an ice cream store and have people come and buy ice cream and then take all your money and go spend it and not have money to pay your staff or pay the building or your electricity. Not gonna get too in depth with that, but just some general ideas. So you would need to understand how to spend your money to manage your business and budget your money to make profit. And profit would be the money that gets to go in your pocket per se as a business owner. So we ask about financial literacy. How does it affect you? Why are you sitting watching this video? Well, financial literacy affects all of us in different ways, but it's a uniformity behind um, what it is. It's about how you manage your money wisely and you'll have a large sum of money to fall back on for retirement or emergencies. So why do we talk about retirement when we're so young? We need to plan early to always put money aside for retirement, because down the line, retirement age could be 55, it could be 65. And when you stop working, you're still going to need money to buy groceries, pay the hydro bill, your phone bill, put gas in your car if you're driving, um, pay your rent, whatever those pieces look like. So later in life, when people retire, it usually means they've stopped working and they're not drawing a re regular paycheck. And 
we start planning now. So if you've ever heard the terminology of an RRSP, a registered retirement savings plan, it's a plan that's set up and you put money in, could be every week, it could be every month. It's not, it doesn't need to be a lot, but you need to start somewhere. I do it every paycheck. I get paid once a month with the way that our company structure that I work for. And every month I put money in for retirement. The other piece of it is those of you that do have jobs, you probably notice that you pay taxes on those that go back to the government. And we pay taxes, they help with medical, our roads to be taken care of. There's all kinds of things, the fire department, the police, ambulance, our taxes help with all of those wonderful things. So when you put money in to a registered retirement savings plan, at the end of the day on your pay, you end up paying a little bit less tax because the government's very happy that you're helping to save for your retirement. So again, lots of information around an RSP retirement. So we can chat about that another day. There's also um, registered disability savings plans. There's all kinds of ways for you to put money aside. Um, but for now, we're just going to kind of keep it top level. So we talked about um, having money for retirement to, for a financial emergency. And here it just talks about an example, your house burning down. So that would be a really big financial emergency where the place you're living in has caught fire. Well, what does that look like? You're going to have to replace clothes and find somewhere to stay. And that's a pretty big financial emergency. But we'd, we'd always like to set you up to be in a position that you're saving and you have hopefully money available in the event that something like this, hopefully it doesn't happen, but if it does. So how does financial literacy affect you today? Why are we watching this today? Well, you can never learn something overnight and we want to try to help educate you. I want to try to help educate you. And it takes a little bit of time to understand this. So again, if you have questions after you've watched this and listened to it, I'm happy to answer them. If you learn a little bit about money management now, it's you're going to be a little more prepared in your future. So what you learn today, I know, start of the video, it's going to help affect your future. You're going to have more knowledge, more education, probably feel a little bit more comfortable in understanding money. And again, this isn't something you're going to learn overnight. It takes time to understand all of it. Trust me, I've been doing the financial business for almost 10 years now, and every day I'm still learning different things. So again, how does financial literacy affect your future? In order for you to be profitable and have a vast sum of money in your future, you need to know how to manage it today, whether it's by investments or savings. So that kind of paragraph has a lot of information. Basically, it's saying profitable, whether you own a business or you have credit in your account, not debt. So for order for you to have money in your bank account, be profitable in your business, a vast sum of money set aside, Maybe it's your RSPs, maybe it's another type of investment, maybe it's in a savings account. There's different ways to do it. And it's all about, and you don't have to do just one way, you can have something in a, in a little investment, you can have money in a savings account, lots of different options. Hopefully it doesn't get too, too confusing. So when we talk about making money or getting a paycheck, a little bit of it comes down to where is it that you're going to maybe be working or maybe where are you working now? So how do you find the career of your dreams? Study what interests you and learn how it applies to your life or career. So if you're interested in working in a store or possibly being a vet technician or working at a salon or there's so many different options, study it, learn about it, you know, do what you can to apply it to your life and, and create an interest in that. You want to look at different job options and figure out which, fat, which best suits you. And it says intellectually, physically, financially. Where, what gets you excited? What kind of a job or career is your mind in the game that you really want to do? And something that you physically enjoy doing? Is it construction work outside? Is it gardening? Is it, and then financially. Financially meaning, is it does it give you the hours that you want? Does it give you the type of, of money, a paycheck that you want every week, every two weeks? All of those pieces are very different. And once you figure out a career path that you want to take, you want to be aggressive, aggressive in following it and don't, opportunity, don't let opportunities pass you by. What is that? You want to find something that you're passionate about. I'm a financial advisor by day and I love it. I love to help people. 
on the side, I volunteer as a volunteer firefighter and I absolutely love it. Those are two things that I'm passionate about. What makes you get out of bed? What are you passionate about? What excites you? Find that idea for a career, for a job, if it's continuing in school and go with that passion. How do you become successful? So I kind of put two things up here. How are you successful if you're an employee? And how are you successful for those of you that might want to own your own business? And when we say own your own business, again, it could be a lawnmower service. It could be a little shop. You could be a house cleaner. Business owner encompasses all different types of businesses. Nothing's too small and nothing's too big if you dream for it. So as an employee, successful, think outside of the box. You always want to contribute in a really positive way to whatever it is you're doing, to your occupation. You wanna enjoy what you do. You wanna to go to work every day with a big smile on your face because you wanna love what you do. You wanna be excited to go there and earn your paycheck. You wanna know how to invest and you wanna save your money. And again, we're gonna talk about retirement. So super important as an employee, you wanna work hard, you wanna keep your job, you wanna make sure you're getting your paycheck and you wanna be in a position that you can slowly start saving for retirement or understand your money to budget. So when you get your paycheck, what does that look like? What do you need to put aside? What's left for you to spend? And if you happen to be a business owner, what are some key things to make you successful? You wanna make sure if you have employees that they're going to feel that he or she, that they're part of your business, that they're kind of like family. You wanna give incentives. Incentives could be a gift card. It could be if everybody works really hard or if you work really hard, maybe you let them leave early one day. Those are incentives. Those are things that are gonna stimulate people that to wanna work really hard for you. You always wanna give positive feedback and let your people know how great they're doing. You wanna respect your employees' opinions. You always wanna take time to listen to them. And you wanna manage your money accordingly to make sure that you as a business owner make the most amount of profit. Again, as a business owner, that could be any kind of business. So how do we kind of bring this all back? The more information you can learn today about understanding your money, understanding how you have to pay taxes to the government, understanding even possibly filing a tax return, how to save, how to budget, how much should I be putting aside? What does that look like? What is a credit? Money in the bank. What is a debit? Mm, money that's not in the bank or money that you owe. We chatted a little bit about credit cards. Visa or MasterCard, what does that look like? How do you get one? You have to pay the bill every month. And it's really understanding when what that looks like um, in terms of, again, getting a paycheck, if you're given money, if you've inherited some money, what to do with your money, how to save it, how to be a saver and not a spender. A spender is somebody that goes out and grabs something and is happy in the moment because they have something in their hands. And a saver is somebody that plans, that plans for future, that plans for retirement, that plans, maybe it's a little trip you want to take, maybe it's school, maybe it's a course, maybe it's a special gift for somebody, maybe it's a fancy pair of shoes that you've always wanted. It's putting the money aside so that you always have something available should you need it, should you have an emergency, maybe it's not something drastic, maybe it is, um, but those are some of the pieces in terms of budgeting. So I want to just chime in and ask Alicia if by chance anybody has come into the chat that might have a question at the moment. Thanks, Paula. Um, so nothing in the chat right now. Okay. I guess if we wanted to open it up, if anyone did have any questions um, that they had for Paula in regards to this or something similar. And chances are some questions might pop up after people have watched this, possibly. So Right. And I think that's a good point, too. And I know that you mentioned it at the beginning that um, this recording will be sent out and, and posted to you. So um, if it's shared with folks who might have questions or want to connect with Paula, just to talk about some specifics, because I think what was really great about this is that it gave this overhead um, like an overview of, of all of these elements. And then I think what's really can be beneficial for people is to have some of the specifics about situations. And so Paula has been um, so lovely to sh share that she's open to like connections and emails and things like that to talk about some more specific um, questions and kind of like more related to individual uh, circumstances. Absolutely. And it's, I mean, this is, it's kind of a little bit of a broad topic because there's a lot of different people that are going to be on here or watching this. 
if somebody has a specific question to, I mean, there's so many different terminologies. If you've heard of a tax-free savings account, a TFSA, what is that? What does it mean? It's a type of savings account. Um, how do I budget? I can get templates for somebody where you fill in what your paycheck is. And then these are my expenses and, and expenses, meaning things that you need to pay for. Maybe you have to pay for a cell phone every month. Maybe what do those look like? And again, every person on here, every situation is different. So it's it's hard to get too specific, but there's budgeting templates. There, you know, There's lots of different banks people can deal with. Bank cards, understanding credit cards. What is, you know, what is retirement? What, how do you put, or how much money you do put aside? And what is an RRSP? Or if you've heard of, um, you know, there's just, there's so many different options in terms of, of saving checking account and a savings account. What are the difference at a bank? And a, a savings account is something that you can generate a little bit more interest. A checking account, back in the day, um, people used to write a check. We don't really do that anymore. Everything's an e-transfer, but people still have a checking account. People keep them separate. I use my checking account to put my paycheck in. I use my savings account for expenses, things I want to buy. The rest get saved. So again, how do we do that? What does that look like? So I can talk forever on this because there's so much information, but. Uh... Absolutely. So I'm not seeing any questions. Um, so I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you so much, Paula, for taking the time to share this super important information um, and such helpful information to help with the financial literacy and also just to, again, a recognition that TD Bank Group um, has provided this as a pilot program to, um, over the next two years to support the implementation of the TD Secures Futures pilot program in three provinces, so Newfoundland, Labrador, um, Ontario, and Saskatchewan to help Canadians living with disabilities and strengthening their financial literacy skills um, and to enhance their independence and long-term financial security. So I'm going to stop the recording now and we'll just kind of follow up in a, in a couple of minutes.